Hello friends, welcome to today's video. My name's Lee, hope you're all doing great. And in today's episode, we're gonna go over all the details with how you can guarantee a shiny anytime you go into a mass outbreak in Pokemon Legends Arceus. So it's been a little while since our last shiny hunting video on the channel. And since then, we've had a bunch more information come out. It's gonna clarify a bunch of things in regards to the mass outbreaks, how they're spawned, how to interact with them, how seeds are generated and how to advance the seeds in the mass outbreak. It's all kind of confusing, but hopefully in this video, I'm gonna kind of go over it step by step. So you come out of it at the end of the video with a better understanding of how mass outbreaks work and how to better approach mass outbreaks. So you're always guaranteeing yourself at least one shiny or multiple shiny if you want from the same outbreak. Now, the first thing to kind of touch on, we've done a bunch of shiny hunting uh, streams since Legends Arceus dropped in. A common question that we always get asked is, I'm looking for mass outbreaks and then not appearing on my map. Well, one of the things I will say is, as long as you have quelled cleaver early on in your playthrough, and you're gonna have access to mass outbreaks. After this point, you're gonna have a mass outbreaks appearing on your map. So from this point, as long as you go from Jubilee Village into the map, you're gonna have about a 20% chance for a outbreak to appear. Kurt Kafonix over on Twitter tweeted this out last week just to confirm these are the spawn rates of a mass outbreak when you check the map from Jubilee Village. So you can see the baseline that you're gonna to wanna to take away from here is every time you do check the map, you've got a 20% chance in each of the areas of an outbreak spawning. Obviously discount the ancient retreat, it isn't an area, and also returning to Jubilee from any area, um, and also leaving Jubilee has a 20% chance to despawn an area uh, that you are not traveling to. So, but the baseline, like I say, is 20% chance every time you check the map of an area having a mass outbreak. So if you haven't got one, and trust me, I've had times where I've been going into the map over and over again and there are no mass outbreaks it's just bad rng you just need to have a bit of patience bit of persistence go into a different area come back to juba life and check the map again and do that over and over until you get the mass outbreak appear now in regards to specific pokemon mass outbreaks appearing I don't know the specific odds for that. I don't know if we know that information yet, but the baseline is, I would say, if I hazarded a guess, each Pokemon available in the Mass Outbreaks probably have about the same chance of appearing as any other. This might be something that's proved completely wrong in future. Hopefully we do get some information on it, but I would say out of all the Pokemon that can appear in a Mass Outbreak, they've probably all got about the same chance, and it's just luck of the draw with which one appears as and when in different areas. As we know, the main kind of idea about doing a mass outbreak is when you're in Jubilee Village you come to the gate here and you talk to this NPC character and he'll say uh, that there's an outbreak you got to be careful when you're visiting different areas you can see here we've got a sneezer one here uh, if you didn't want sneezer you just want to come to a different area and we know from the tweet from Kurt that it will hopefully despawn the Sneasel outbreak that we've got in the Alabaster Iceland. There's a 20% chance of it despawning, but when we come back to Jubilee Village, we're gonna have another 20% chance in each of the areas of a mass outbreak appearing in those different areas around the Hisui region. So you can see we come back into the map here, here in outbreaks again, and you can see that the Sneasel one is gone, and then we've got a Shinx outbreak here in the Coronet Highlands. So we can use this as an example here. Now, every time you leave Jubilee Village here and you come into a mass outbreak, basically the idea is you come into the mass outbreak and every single Pokemon that is in this mass outbreak is determined on this trip from Jubilee to Coronet Highlands or whichever area you can visit where your mass outbreak is. So the first thing to do, I would always suggest, is drop a pin exactly where the outbreak is. Just drop a pin so you know exactly where you're going. And then the next thing to do is just drop a save. Now we've been through this in the other guide, but we're gonna go through a few things in this guide today that shows you the best ways of approaching every single mass outbreak. So once you've got your save drop down, what we're gonna do is make our way over to the area where the outbreak is. You know the outbreak is down here. You're gonna to wanna to have all your useful items like your stealth spray, your smoke bombs, sticky globs, and ultra balls and jet balls. They're gonna be kind of your staples with most hunts. And you wanna just approach the outbreak here. And what we're gonna do for the first time is we are going to just catch all the Pokemon. That is all we're gonna do, just catch the Pokemon. Can we, can we jet ball them from here? I don't know, they might be a little bit too far away. Let's see. Oh no, this is gonna work. So one, two, 
three, four, five. Oh, bit high. Oh, and there's a shiny. There's a shiny. There we go. Okay, so five, six, and this would make this what spawn seven, I guess. Let me catch it. Okay, so how many are that left there? One, two, three. And they've stopped spawning after that. So let's just catch these. And let's just see whereabouts this shiny spawned in regards to how many we've got for this out this particular outbreak. Because they've stopped spawning. Once you know they've stopped spawning, you can kind of leave an area. But the, the official kind of message that comes up, the reported Pokemon have gone from this area. So we know this outbreak's finished. And we can head back to the camp. We'll just we just want to check here. We just want to check where this shiny spawn. This is great for this example. So let's just see. I uh, want to check our Pokemon. We've got four in our party. So we've got one, two, three, four. They were the initial four that were there. We caught all of them. And then we had two more. And then in our, that next batch of four, we had the shiny spawn. So we had uh, it spawned on the seventh the seventh slot here and then we had one two three after that so a total of 10 pokemon uh, 10 shinx is what we had okay so we know that the shiny spawns in on around the seventh it's around the seventh pokemon but it's in that second batch of four and from what we know with how outbreaks work is when you leave jubilife and come to an area where an outbreak is all of the Pokemon in that outbreak are predetermined. So when you come to an area, that's why it's important to drop a save in the camp. Now, you might be saying, you've just called it shiny, why are you resetting it? Doesn't matter because we already have that shiny locked in, but we have to kind of progress the game in the same sort of way to get that shiny again. Now, if we go now, what we're gonna do is just show you an example. We'll head to that same area the mountain camp i believe it is um and instead of catching the pokemon this time like we just did we're just going to catch the pokemon one by one and this is going to prove to you that it doesn't matter if you are catching or battling the pokemon whether or not it changes how the shiny appears so we've put our stealth spray on let's put smoke bomb down here just to give ourselves a bit of cover because shinx are pretty aggro and non shinx they will attack us and we don't want to be battling these in a multi-battle situation we want to be battling these one at a time so there's one so two so that's two so this is three so this is four so the shiny should really spawn in at any point now in this batch of the next four because it was it's hard to keep track of when you're catching which kind of batch you are catching or which ones you're knocking like which one at the time you're catching because if you just kind of launching jet balls at them you can kind of determine whereabouts it is but you can't guarantee exactly where it is so there we go okay here we are so as you can see we'll just catch this one and what was that six oh yeah so this is the sixth spawn in so it's definitely in that second batch um, and there is four more left uh, we can just pick these off these ones just to show you that there'll be the same amount of Pokemon overall and then hopefully that proves to you battling them one by one or catching them one by one doesn't make any difference to the outcome of an outbreak so you can do it both ways right so we should we're obviously gonna have less pokemon this time so we had 10 last time we've got one two three four five here we got our fifth one being up here so we battle five this is uh, spawned in on our sixth one it spawned in when we were catching them on our seventh one but you, as i say because we were catching so many at the same time there were many spawning in so we don't know whether it was the sixth or the seventh but it's it's there there's no difference between catching um the pokemon or battling them one by one now what we're going to do is we know that that shinx is spawned in on this save in this mass outbreak right here so we're going to approach it one more time but this time we're going to approach it by doing multiple battles all at once and see what this does to the mass outbreak and how you do not want to approach a mass outbreak by doing multiple battles all at once because it will change the outcome of an outbreak it will dictate different pokemon are respawned from the ones that are respawned when you just catch a pokemon or battle it one at a time 
So back in game once again, we'll travel up to the mountain camp and we'll make our way this time. And we're just gonna be head on, go for these shinks, not worry about any items, make sure that our Pokemon's at the start of our party, enter the outbreak, and you can see aggro Pokemon gonna come for us. They're not gonna despawn. They're all gonna be aware of us and we'll see if we can battle as many of these as we can. See how many pop up. We got all four, so that's perfect. This is like the worst. You don't wanna battle four at a time. It is not the way to approach the outbreak. So technically, when we battle all these four, going on the logic of if, if it doesn't matter, uh, how you approach a mass outbreak by battling or catching or whatever then the logic should be the next four pokemon that spawn in one of those should be a shiny right one of them should be a shiny we've taken two down we've got two more to go so i'm just going to try and park myself in this bit of grass here we're not too far away from the battle we've got one more to go and the four that spawn in next one of them should be a shiny on the logic that we know that there is a shiny on the sixth or seventh spawn in, right? So one, two, three. Oh, no shiny, no shiny at all, which is quite interesting. So what we'll do is we'll just try and pick these ones off, six that we've caught, and that would take us to our 10. But we'll go back to the camp now. And this proves, this proves the point that if you do multi-battles, you get a different selection of pokemon so yeah you can see there's the six we battled four we got the same amount of pokemon in all three different situations but the only difference was in this last one the only one where the shiny didn't pop up is because we did a multi-battle which then affects how the seed plays with regenerating the pokemon don't need to go into too many details about it but that will affect how um, your shiny is uh, pretty much missed out from doing a multi-battle because you're generating four Pokemon under a different seed to what you would have been doing if you were doing it one at a time, either catching or battling. So this is the point. So we'll reset the game again and I'll prove that we haven't lost this shiny. And there's no way we've lost this shiny. We'll go back to it, we'll catch the Pokemon and this is the point. I think on our streams, we've not been super strict when we've been doing shiny hunting, but we've been in the mind where I didn't want to get into battles with any Pokemon ever, predominantly because the battles take longer. Catching Pokemon is a lot easier. Stealth mode feels a bit more appealing than heading straight on and battling Pokemon or despawning them or whatever. So I prefer to catch them. We've had a really good success on our shiny hunting streams. Um, so in regards to that, I would always say just catch the Pokemon. It is the simplest method. Doing this, you aren't going to miss a Pokemon either. Now doing mass multi-battling with the Pokemon can obviously affect how your shiny is going to be spawned. So knowing this is such good information because there has been occasions where I've been hunting Rufflet and we went 64 chain deep in our outbreak uh, just to get the Rufflet. And that was because we were doing multi-battles with them because they're aggressive Pokemon. We were doing one-on-one -on -one battles with them, which then affected after the multi-battles and things like that. So we did a bunch of different things. It was always going to be affecting how the shinies were found. And if we'd known that, oh, all you need to do is just catch the Pokemon and make sure you catch all of them or make sure you just battle them all one at, one at a time uh, or despawn them one at a time, then it's not going to affect how... We should get the shiny pop up now. Should pop up. There we are. There we go. You see, we knew it was going to pop up in that second, that second lot after the initial four. And there we go. So, ooh, we didn't catch it for a second. I was like, have we got a second shiny? What's going on? No. But. This is basically proving that if you just stick to the same method, every time you come to a, a spawn, just catch it or defeat them one at a time, you're gonna not miss shinies. If you start going into multi-battles, it is gonna mean you're gonna miss shinies. Now, if a Pokemon despawns, if it's a skittish Pokemon, like um, a Hapini, for instance, that like run away or you can't catch them, or one of the starters, for instance, don't worry, despawning, a Pokemon despawning, running away is pretty much exactly like you catching it or battling it. 
it will count in exactly the same way. The only thing that's gonna deviate your results um, and, and give you variations is when you battle and defeat multiple Pokemon at once. So it's a good idea just to stay clear of doing that, but don't be under the illusion that catching is better than battling or battling is better than catching. They all do the same thing as long as you're doing it in the same sort of fashion, one at a time, so then your respawns are spawning in one at a time. So if we come to our Pokemon Professor, you can see here, got our first cohort of four and we may have caught you know the the, the, the next cohort of four before getting the shiny but the, the the idea is that the shiny is still spawned we did a sneasel hunt earlier on in the alabaster icelands where we came to this area we caught the pokemon and a shiny popped up reset the game came back battled them one by one the shiny still popped up came back again after resetting the game and then we multi-battled we only did two pokemon multi-battled two of them at one time and then caught the rest and no shiny popped up in that specific one. We set the game again, came back, caught the Pokemon from the start and the shiny respawned in the spot where it was meant to originally. But by doing the multi battle, we skipped over that spawn and generated other spawns randomly from deeper into the kind of seed of this mass outbreak and missed the shiny. So by doing that and not understanding how to approach a mass outbreak, you could be missing shinies along the way. And that's not something you want to do. We did it with a Chimchar outbreak as well. And what you can do as well to get multiple shinies from an outbreak is as soon as you catch a shiny from an outbreak, leave that outbreak and then head back to camp. Check how many Pokemon you've caught and then save your game at camp and then go back to Jubilee Village and then come back again to that area if the uh, the mass outbreak is there, which it should be. If it's not, just reset your game and then come back to Jubilee, check the map. The same outbreak should be there. And you can come back to the same outbreak and then repeat the process again. There may be fewer Pokemon appearing in the initial few outbreaks, but as you get deeper into resetting into those chain outbreaks, you're gonna get more Pokemon again. The Chimchar outbreak I did, it started with, the, we've got the shiny on pretty much the, 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 the fifth last Pokemon. Pokemon. So there was four Pokemon remaining in the outbreak. Come back, catch the four Pokemon, and the outbreak would end. Did that over and over again until the point of that outbreak actually spawning multiple Chimchars once again. Um, and then after about 40 minutes of resetting, another shiny did spawn in that area. Did the same with the Sneasel outbreak as well. Didn't take as long, but you can get multiple Pokemon from the same outbreak by just chaining the same outbreak over and over again. Just make sure that you follow the steps of coming from Jubilee Village to the area where their mass outbreak is, drop a save in the camp, head to the mass outbreak, catch all the Pokemon. If there's no shiny there, reset your game, go back to Jubilee, come back into the area. Hopefully it's the same outbreak. If it's not, just reset your game and then come back to Jubilee again, go back into the map, head back to the area where the mass outbreak is, drop your save at the camp, head back out to the outbreak and then rinse and repeat catch the pokemon and you're going to guarantee yourself a shiny by doing it this way don't deviate away from the process you remember you can catch or defeat pokemon but when you're defeating them you have to do it one at a time you can't go into multi battles that's the rule of thumb but the best advice is just to stick to catching pokemon it's a lot easier it's a lot more streamlined if you make a mistake and the shiny appears and then you you lose it for some reason you need to reset and come back you know the exact steps that you've taken to that point where the shiny spawned so you can get it again so good luck shiny hunting friends hope the guide has been useful today the update with information as soon as we've got more information on the mass outbreak hunting i will do an update on it so make sure if you want to stay up to date with all of that you hit the subscribe button if you've enjoyed the video please leave a like it does really help the video and help spread the word and and get the uh, the message out there to help others shiny hunt in their games so thank you again for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day and i'll catch you all on another video very soon. So until then, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.